Climate change is threatening a majority of the world's lemur population in Madagascar. Nearly all lemurs live on the African island, and there's more than 100 different species, but there are only about 2,000 of those animals left in the world. That's a 95% decrease since the year 2000. That is scary. Lemurs are crucial when it comes to studying life-threatening human disease. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata visited researchers in Madagascar working to save them. Six hours of hiking in the Ranamafana rainforest, we finally spotted one of the rarest animals in the world, a Sufaka lemur, one of only 2,000 left, and the species that could unlock the mysteries of Alzheimer's. Anthropologist Pat Wright from New York's Stony Brook University told us that lemurs share many of the same genes as humans. She's turned the island's national park into a science lab and has been studying lemurs for 30 years. It's kind of ironic that an animal that is on the verge of extinction could hold the key to so many life-threatening diseases. That's really true. It's like burning a library. It's a, it's a real shame. But hopefully we'll be able to save these little guys and uh, we'll be able to unlock their secrets. Madagascar is the only place in the world that lemurs exist. There are over 100 different species, including the mouse lemur, our smallest cousin. On the mouse lemurs, why do they hold such importance for us? Because they get some of the same diseases that we get. A lot of the experiments on human health are done on the mouse, and the mouse is not very closely related to us, and it only lives two years. So you couldn't possibly study some of the, some of the long-term kind of diseases. Alzheimer's is top of Wright's list. Her team has embedded computer chips in hundreds of lemurs so they can monitor the development of Alzheimer's for an average of 20 years. She's built a genetic data bank from her research and her hope is it will lead to new drugs one day. But it is a race against time. Lemurs cannot survive without forests, and 95% of the lemur's natural habitat outside this park is gone. Researchers bait traps to lure the mouse lemurs inside. Oh, a mouse lemur? No, we check the microchip ID. They work under a red light to mimic the nighttime conditions mouse lemurs like best and to prevent damage to their eyes. Testing the lemur's strength Think of a Fitbit for lemurs was also a test of patience, with added thanks for thick gloves. Each one is weighed and measured. They're looking for early signs of disease or weight loss. Once the tests are over, the lemurs are released unharmed back into the wild. But now they are facing a new threat. Madagascar has been hard hit by extreme changes in weather, strong cyclones, severe drought, then torrential rain. And this year, Wright told us, the fruit trees that are the lemur's main food source did not flower. This has never happened before. For the lemurs, it's devastating because it means they can't get fat enough to actually produce offspring. And they probably won't starve, but they certainly are going to go hungry. The number of baby lemurs that survive beyond six months has dropped to 47% from 70 in just three years. And she told us she was shocked by other changes she'd seen on the trip. This used to be a lake. There used to be crocodiles here last year. Wright is fearful the devastating changes to the island spell the end of her lemurs. Madagascar itself is like the canary in the coal mine. Mm. This island is very vulnerable, and so climate change makes a, a bigger impact here. But it's a warning. It's a warning signal to the world. And Deborah Pata is with us now from Johannesburg. Uh, Deborah, what a fascinating story. Uh, we heard you talk about climate change and deforestation as huge threats to the existence of lemurs. But how bad was it there in Madagascar? What did you see? Vlad, well, one climate change expert in Madagascar put it like this, that we see all these reports that come out regularly. I think the most recent was the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel report, which warned that by 2030, if we don't make drastic changes right now um, to reduce carbon emissions, we will be seeing catastrophic consequences of climate change, intense, severe heat, drought, floods, and poverty. This climate change expert said Madagascar is 2030 right now. 
That is how bad it is. There are increasingly severe cyclones. They happen more frequently. There's torrential rain, prolonged um, periods of drought, and of course, food security. There's starvation in some parts at various times in the year because of these severe weather patterns. As you saw, that one area, which was a lake just a year ago, is now this arid patch of land. And that's something you see everywhere you go. So the consequences are very severe indeed. And another problem is deforestation, where people burn the forest which is really important to the survival of lemurs for slash and burn agriculture. And that too is causing very severe consequences where, for example, in 2017, just two years ago, Madagascar had the plague. Now, the world thought that this was wiped out in the 1300s, but Madagascar had pneumonic plague, and scientists say that one of the causes is deforestation, where the farmers were burning down parts of the forest to grow their crops to create more space during the rainy season, and this drove the plague-bearing black rats into the cities, carrying this plague, and suddenly a country, an island that 100 years ago was plague-free, is seeing new cases all the time, and I think that gives a sense for of just how bad things are. So then is there anything being done to address the effects of both climate change and deforestation? I think, Anne-Marie, that one of the things about Madagascar, it's a harbinger of what's to come. We can learn so many lessons about what will happen elsewhere in the world if we don't take these drastic steps. And that's why, you know, Pat Wright referred to it as the canary in the coal mine. One of the things is the rainforest. There's been huge attempts at reforestation. Pat Wright, together with the community living in Ranamafana, saved that rainforest. It, it was about to die out. But she worked with the community, educated them, and explained that this was their livelihood, that this would attract tourists. People would come just to see the rainforest, just to see the lemurs, because they only exist in Madagascar. And I think this was such a wonderful thing that she worked with them to build it. And now you see this forest thriving because of the work that they've put in. It's been saved. Not only are lemurs endemic to Madagascar, which means they can't be found anywhere else in the world, Pretty much all of their reptiles, their amphibians, their frogs and, and creatures like that um, are indigenous to Madagascar. You won't find them anywhere else. Seventy percent of their butterflies, half their birds. So that is something that people can do there is to reforest the place and try and save it. You've also seen farmers try and develop hybrid seeds that can perhaps withstand climate change. They're not saying let's end climate change. What they're saying is how can we adapt to it? And again, what you're seeing is they're starting to go cops. Um, um, more common is like vanilla, cacao, chocolate, coffee beans, pepper, all my, all my vices basically in the forest growing symbiotically. So as the forest grows, these crops grow. Instead of burning it down, they use the forest to build it up. And I think another area is that around the world, we can also assist with reducing carbon emissions because Madagascar, one scientist explained, doesn't have a lot of carbon emissions. It's quite low on the scale compared to industrialized countries, but it is paying for the environmental crimes of the rest of the world. You hear about countries trying to be sort of climate resistant now. How can they figure out how to sort of shore themselves up against the rapid changes that a climate change uh, is bringing? Hopefully, Deborah, it is not too late for Madagascar. A, a great story, though. Thank you very much. You can watch the full episode of The Last of the Lemurs on the Down to Earth Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and then search Down to Earth by CBS News. And you can also like the page for notifications when new episodes are uploaded.